Welcome to worship. Today we are celebrating the youth service trip to Sierra Service Project, also known as SSP. Our theme was branching out this year, and it seemed fitting as we were surrounded by the beautiful redwood trees. Please stand as you are comfortable and join me in worship adapted from Psalm 1. Blessed are those who delight in the law of the Lord. You will bear fruit in season. Your leaf will not wither. The Lord watches over all of us as we follow the way. Let us join in singing the opening hymn for the beauty of the earth. The words can be found in your worship bulletin, or you can follow along in your pew hymnal. You may be seated. Trusting in God's goodness and grace, we join now in prayer of confession and renewal, followed by a, si a time of silent prayer. Creator God, you have nurtured each of us to produce the fruits of compassion and justice in the world. Yet there are times when we find that our branches are bare. We rush about it in our daily lives but our deep hungers are not satisfied. Our fears and anxieties persist. Show us your power and your glory. Take our weariness and renew our hope. For our souls thirst for you, living God. Open our hearts and clear our minds. Help us to find a path that leads full life in you. Our God, amen. When we lift our hearts in prayer, we find strength and mercy in God's embrace. Friends, let us believe the gospel that in Jesus Christ we are forgiven and set to, free to live in love. Amen.
we'll take a moment now to greet one another in the peace of Christ. This is a group that is happy to be together, and so welcome is extending within and without this congregation. We're fully aware that many of our worshipers, especially today, might be preferring to worship from home, and so welcome to all of us. We are joined by God's loving Holy Spirit, whether we're physically present here or gathered with our attention in worship wherever we live. Today, as you have been told already, is Sierra Service Project Sunday. I feel a little bit like the, the balance of population and weight is tilting this way in the sanctuary. Usually it's over here in the choir, but today we have uh, everybody in their matching SSP t-shirts, and thankfully we do have Althea and Abby to lead us in our music and singing as well. Yay. Our other associate pastor, Kristen Sutrave, has organized this worship service as she was the lead organizer of the Sierra Service Project journey. She's assisted by Cassie and uh, all these wonderful youth who we trust will be introducing themselves as time goes along. Jonathan and Tira have gone to their peaceful, happy place near the lake, on the lake in Canada. They were very excited because this summer, one of the pairs of loons that live on the lake has hatched a baby. We do not apparently call it a chick. We call it a loonlet. <laughs> I looked this up. Google cannot be wrong. So they, uh, they, we picture them. They're enjoying some relaxation. Our flowers this morning are, first of all, a gift from Althea in loving memory of her mother, Clara French Mitchell but also another beautiful bouquet from the Sherwoods, who on Tuesday will celebrate their 70th, 70, 70th wedding anniversary. Yay. The coffee makers uh, asked me to tell you that the coffee is present this morning. It's just inside Hughes Hall instead of outside in the drizzle. So if you need some coffee afterward, that's where you can find it. We are in what I would call the mid to late, late August window of, it, you know, a lot of people practice spring cleaning, but here at RHUMC, our window for really going at the projects and the cleaning is this, this moment of one or two weeks when both Kid Zone and the preschool are on hiatus. And so suddenly we can paint the bathrooms, for instance, or uh, repair the roofing and uh, fix the back wall of the sanctuary and scrub the turf and clean out all the closets that have gotten all disorganized as the year has gone along. So we're excited by the projects that are happening. Still upcoming is some carpet cleaning and carpet replacement, some fence replacement. Uh, and so we're grateful to those who organize those projects. I want to reiterate what Jonathan said last Sunday about the upcoming information session about our fall grief support group. For the past several years, we've had the wonderful privilege and benefit of having Claire Toll, a, a member of our congregation and a professional in grief and bereavement support, to guide one-time gatherings as the holidays approach. And uh, over the years, we've heard more and more how helpful it would be to people if the group could meet more than once. And so this year that is finally coming to pass. We're able to organize an eight-week series. And what's happening this Thursday at 11 is an information session. So if you don't have to commit to the eight-week group yet, you could just come to the information session. You can meet Claire and her colleagues who will lead the group. And 
decide whether it would be a good fit for you. I also want to be sure to say that these flyers are in the entry area and you can freely take as many as you need if you have friends or neighbors who you think might appreciate this opportunity. It's not only for us here at the church, it's for the community. So help, help us get the word out so that those who could benefit from the company of others on the journey of grief might have that opportunity. I want to thank you all for your generosity to the people of Maui and the Lahaina United Methodist Church. At the end of the week, we were able to send $10,000 that you all have given, and we are still collecting. So we, you know, we haven't missed your chance. If you haven't donated yet, you can uh, write a check, you can use the online giving portal, you can put cash in an envelope, just whichever method you use, make sure you write Maui Fire Recovery or Lahaina UMC, something that will indicate to us that that is what your gift is for. Before I leave these moments of sharing about our life together, I want to uh, invite that you take a moment, if you're here in the sanctuary, to circulate the friendship notebooks, uh, or whether you're here or remote, there's a QR code on the back of your bulletin. Either way, we'd like to have your name and contact information to celebrate your presence, to be sure that we have a way to follow up and stay in touch with you. So please find one of those ways to say hi to me and Jonathan, and um, we will be glad to be helpful as we are able to be. Now, there will be some telling by the youth about what the Sierra Service Project was like, but before the telling comes the showing. So here is the SSP slideshow. Those with their backs to the screen will get out of the way. The usher will adjust the lighting, and away we go.
would now like to invite the attention of the children to come forward. Three awesome children, yes. Hi, Bella. So, good morning. Some of you may have noticed it looks a little different up there, right? Uh, usually it's uh, just a few adult leaders, but we today invited an amazing team of youth who are going to share about their trip to Sierra Service Project. And you just got to see the slideshow, and it may have looked like most of our time was spent either pulling ivy or painting a big green wall or some mulching or even uh, we did some ramps and we did a lot of construction and staining and drilling. But in the evening, we made sure we made time for spiritual programming. And we also had spiritual sandwiches, which I know sounds pretty cool. It was a discussion to have during lunch along with our peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. And during our spiritual programming, we learned about the theme of branching out. And our spiritual life coordinator taught us some movements to help us really embody what the program was about. So I'm gonna teach you the movements and anyone could join if you'd like, and then you could do it together. So I'll do it once and then we'll do it all together. So first, we plant a seed. We have very deep roots and a strong trunk. Then we have flexible branches with many leaves. And eventually, we bear fruit. So do you guys want to do that movement with me? So first, we're going to do our seed, and we're going to plant it in the ground with our deep roots our strong trunk, our flexible branches, <laughs> our many leaves, and the fruit that we bear. Now, some of you may be like, oh, are you talking about like fruit fruit? Banana. Yeah, it's a banana. But actually, I'm talking about a different type of fruit. I know this is delicious and probably more common for you to see. However, humans bear fruit as well. In our scripture reading today, we hear from three different books of the Bible, but when we hear from Galatians, it says the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Now, those are very different. I didn't say banana, did I? No, not apple, not orange. I was talking about pieces of us that we get to share with our community. And one of my favorite fruits of the Spirit that is very evident at SSP is the joy. Now, we're all about creating a sense of community where you could be your authentic self. And sometimes it's hard to be the authentic you. So I brought a um, joke book I got from uh, the bookstore. Um, and it was super popular with the youth, right? <laughs> <laughs> so I had some awesome gems like, why did the forest take a nap? For rest. <laughs> yes. Or, uh, so that was just one example of how we got to be a little joyful and goofy. In our slideshow, you got to hear Goodnight Derek, which Derek, our, our wonderful, wonderful camper, uh, made sure to say everyone's name before we went to sleep. And in turn, we got to reply Goodnight Derek at the end. Um, we also were able to make really cool friendship bracelets and show each other that we cared and that we were happy to see one another. We even did this really silly activity that was the very end of our slideshow. You're like, what were they doing? We were brushing our teeth, but doing squats to a song. There was no purpose. There was no like higher meaning to it. It was just to be fun and to be community and do something that's normally really boring, like brushing your teeth. And instead it became like, I think the highlight for some of our nights of just laughing and being community. You know, 
The Spirit is so alive in us when we are laughing, when we are joyful. And at SSP, it just felt like that joy was overflowing. At SSP, we say God is good, and God was truly good in working wonders in us, but not just at SSP. All around us, we're all planting our own seeds and growing amazing fruit in our communities. And each of you can find a little bit of joy and spread it with your friends as well as you go throughout the world. So will you please join me in prayer? Dear God, we thank you for our deep roots, our strong trunks, our flexible branches, our many leaves, and we thank you for growing such good fruit. May we go forth in joy and peace. Amen. So you could join Miss Dever in Sunday school. The book of Revelation describes the city of God as encompassing the river of the water of life, which is straddled by the enormous tree of life. The tree bears fruit, and the leaves are of the tree are for the healing of the nations. We might think of our prayers as a vast constellation of leaves fluttering on our breath and blessed by God. We have three new prayer requests this week. The Fung family has requested that we remember the life of Francis Fung, the only brother of Clarence, and Francis joined the Saints in Light and his brother on August 3rd. Tom and Kathy Berg requested that we remember their grandniece, Katie Reiners, who's been in the hospital for a number of days with maybe a serotonin imbalance that's causing full body spasms. She's a young mother, and so they 
are glad to have our prayers supporting her as along with their prayers. And then uh, the third is that Dick Gerlach, upon leaving his doctor's office on Friday morning, fell backward and landed on his head, fractured his skull, and suffered a brain bleed. So he is at Harbor UCLA over there on Carson in the ICU, and his wife, Pat, and his three children are, of course, keeping watch there with him. It, when I last spoke with them, the brain bleed had stopped, and so it just remains to be seen how things will up unfold from here. So with these and other joys and concerns that may be in our hearts and minds, we come to God in prayer. God of the ages and of the present moment, we reach toward you when we are in the depths. We stretch toward you in the heights. Your love, like air, is within us and around us. In you, we live and move and have our being. Thank you for your guidance of the traveling and the learning and the working and the resting of these youth who are leading us in worship today and their adult counselors. Thank you for the signs of their presence that they left behind in the Smith River area among new friends to be a symbol of your grace toward all creation. Thank you for what they share today so that we may know something of their experience. We are grateful for this particular service project crew, just as we are grateful for those who are responding to the deep needs of the people on Maui and other fire-scorched parts of Hawaii and Canada. Bolster the strength of courage of the professionals, residents, and volunteers alike as they work each day in the face of loss, destruction, and grief. Our lives are linked to neighbors near and far, and so we remember evacuees and refugees and those who are trying to help them, victims of war and those who are trying to care for them, persons whose lives are limited by fear and those who are trying to advocate for them. Your grace and goodness are the source of our hope and the inspiration for our efforts to move through the world with kindness and compassion. Calling to mind now the dear ones who are experiencing illness, medical treatment, surgery, therapy, and extended care, including Katie, Dick, Samantha, Liesel, Bill, Andy, Ron, Jake, Jean, Joan, Carolyn, Sally, Kelly and Beth, Marilyn, Elena, Dita, Chrissy, Viola, and others whose names are known to you and to us. We trust you for their present and future prospects. Connect them to wise physicians, immerse them in healing light, Remind them of your great love for each and every one of your children, among whom they may count themselves. And when the time comes for any of us to reach the end of our journey in this life, turn the eyes of our hearts toward the beauty and peace of life eternally in your presence. Thank you for Francis Fung, now among the saints in light with his cherished brother Clarence. Comfort those who are missing his physical presence. Gracious God, if every prayer for healing and every expression of thanks for the love of parent, spouse, or friend is a green leaf or a pine needle extended in your direction, then we are a mighty forest. Thank you for seeing us and hearing us and sending Jesus to show us the way forward. As he taught us, so now we pray, saying together, our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We share our gifts each week in many ways, whether they are given in person, through the mail, or online. We make our offering to God's mission in this world. Let us pray. Loving God, accept the gifts we bring to you this day. Help us share our gifts with the world around us so that others may know your love. Amen. be seated. We started the week at SSP looking at our roots, the things that ground us. Then we examined our trunks and the rings or life events that have shaped us. Our branches and leaves were our hopes and dreams, but also parts of us that came and went with the seasons. Our final day was about the fruits, the gifts we could give others. Our scripture reading comes from three parts of the Bible. Jeremiah, Isaiah, and Galatians. Jeremiah, chapter 17, verses 7 through 8. Blessed are those who trust in the Lord, whose trust is the Lord. They shall be like a tree planted by water, sending out roots by the stream. It shall not fear when heat comes, and its leaves shall stay green. In the year of drought, it is not anxious, and it does not cease to bear fruit. Isaiah chapter 15, verse 12. For you shall go out in joy and be led back in peace. The mountains and the hills before you shall burst into song, and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 through 23. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Sierra Service Project is a ecumenical Christian nonprofit organization that provides life-changing experiences through acts of service, repairing homes in rural and urban communities. They invite youth to experience the profound power of serving others who have a cultural and life experience different from their own. In SSP's Statement of Theology, they say that at SSP, we respond to God's invitation 
to open ourselves up to the possibility of a transformational experience. In community, we begin to recognize our dependence on God and interdependence with each other. As a community, we strive to grow being led by the Spirit. We choose to serve believing that through our humble acts of love, we can learn about God's character and love for us. We seek to accept people as they are from the moment they stand before us as the first step towards relationship. We seek to remain open, an openness of hand, of heart, that we might give, receive, and understand. I love that SSP is grounded in God and love and community. It's one of my favorite parts of SSP, and I think they've stayed true to this spirit all along. They were originally founded in 1975 and were inspired after an Appalachian service project on the East Coast. Uh, Methodist ministers were essential at creating this West Coast version. And they are now a nonprofit that has had over 500 volunteers this summer. And we all worshiped and worked together side by side. They had three different locations two in California and one in Arizona. Our church, Rolling Hills United Methodist Church, sent five adults and 19 youth this summer to Del Norte County. I did want to take this opportunity to um, thank uh, some of our adult counselors. Phil is in the back. Thank you, Phil. Woohoo! Uh, and then we, Cassie was also a counselor with us as well. Um, yay! <laughs> And two of our other adult leaders, um, Emily Howard and Todd Froome, uh, will be joining us in the later services. And today I have the joy of sharing, well, introducing youth who will share about their experience at SSP. We have three amazing speakers for you this morning. We have Derek O'Neill, Maggie Gerlach, and Clara Gerlach, who will be coming forward to tell you all about their trip. Hello, my name is Derek O'Neill. In fact, you might have heard it during the slideshow a couple of times. And I'm going to speak about my experience at SSP. First, I'd like to take a moment to thank everyone that helped make SSP a reality for RHUMC. We couldn't have done it without your support. Now, this is my first year at SSP. In the beginning, I didn't really want to go. I just saw it as another opportunity to serve. And don't get me wrong, I do love to serve, but SSP was so much more than that. For me, it was about the experience, the people I met, and the memories we created together. While it is true that week seven at SSP was mainly just RHUMC, with only three other people from a different place, I was able to speak to people that I hadn't really talked to much at RHUMC. I could go up to anybody and just strike up a conversation, and that was very valuable to me. What I'm trying to say here is that my favorite part of SSP was the sense of community that we created together. Not a single time did I feel excluded from anything. In fact, I was actually included in most things. I was able to make a name for myself there. I truly felt like I was in a place where I belonged. Everybody there knew who I was, and I did too. Even the people that hadn't come to SSP with RHUMC became some of my closest friends. This community we created together in just one week was very inspiring to me. Sure, the work was hard, but together, we managed to make it more bearable. Here, I actually felt like the work I put in made a difference. One day, my group was tasked with painting the walls of a building. They were very high up, so we had to ladder up to the top of a roof and lean over the walls to paint it. It was actually very fun. I got to do it with my friends. And as we left to go for our showers, we looked back and saw a once brown part of the wall green and now fit in with the rest of the building. That's what SSP is all about, creating a community that you can fit in with as well. I might have gone not really wanting to go, but I left longing to come back next year. Thank you. Hello, my name is Maggie Gerlach, and I am a junior at South High School. This summer was my fourth summer with the Sierra Service Project, as I attended in 2020 on Zoom, 2021 at this church, and last year in person in Del Norte County. SSP has become a very influential part of my life 
because in addition to being such a unique and unforgettable opportunity, I am also on their Youth Advisory Council and I'm going to be a board member this year. At one of my meetings with the Youth Advisory Council a couple of months ago, we brainstormed ideas about what the theme for SSP could be this year. Our main idea was about how coming out of COVID, many people struggled with relearning basic social skills and how to interact with others after a period of isolation. That experience taught us to rely heavily on our social network, which includes people that we are connected to through shared experiences. This resulted in the theme of branching out for SSP 2023, which focused on creating new connections and memories while still relying on our past or roots to ground us. One way that we branched out during the week was by connecting with the people around us. SSP takes away our phones, so in a time of technology and social media, we were forced for a week to talk to each other and find other ways to entertain ourselves, such as playing Uno Dare or making friendship bracelets together. RHUMC was also the only group that was there that week, so besides three other volunteers that came, we were able to create bonds with the people that came with the church, but we might not have known as well. Another, another example of creating connections was when we went on a full group work day to the Talawa Dunes to remove invasive beach grass to make room for native species. At the start of the day, each work team was given a section of grass to clear, and the teams were in a competition to see who could remove the most grass. However, by the end of the day, we had abandoned the competition and were working together to remove the grass. And you would not believe how much more grass we cleared when we embodied the saying, we are better together. In addition to the sense of community that we built, I also branched out by developing new construction skills. This year, I was part of a work team led by Kristen and Emily, and we were the self-proclaimed ramp champs. So you guessed it, we built a ramp. We were in charge of finishing a 43-foot ramp that had been worked on by six weeks of volunteers before us. I got more practice drilling pilot holes, screwing in nails, and measuring and chopping wood, which I've never tried outside of SSP. I also learned how to mix and pour concrete, which was a tiring and satisfying job. Working with my team while practicing all of these skills and helping others was a very rewarding experience. Another experience that I had during the week that re represented branching out was an early morning walk to a local lighthouse. Although waking up an hour and a half early after a day of hard work is not very fun, I decided to attend the walk because I knew it would create unique memories. And it did. We went to a marine mammal center and saw two play playful seals and then hiked past tide pools to a lighthouse on top of this big rock. The view was amazing and we had fun singing on the way back. And personally, I feel that I branched out that week because my sister Clara and my dad were both on the trip this year, but we were on separate work teams and did not see each other all the time. I stepped out of the comfort zone of my family in order to spend time with friends that I don't get to see all the time. In conclusion, this year's theme of branching out proved to me that interacting with new people, having new or different experiences, and taking opportunities that you might be a little bit afraid of can be a very fulfilling to one's personal growth. But also, I will be taking this theme with me into my everyday life. I don't need a structured camp to branch out and grow as a person. And now I will be more open to new people, places, and things that I might be hesitant to try. Because although my roots and trunk ground me and are a part of who I am, branches are equally important and you can't have branches if you don't branch out. Thank you all for your support in making this trip possible. Um, hello, my name is Clara Gerlach and I'm an incoming freshman at South High School. This summer was my first time participating in the real Sierra Service Project experience. Three years ago, I attended SSP on Zoom, and two years ago, I helped build the labyrinth here at RHEMC. I had a great time those summers working with SSP, but nothing compared to this summer. My SSP experience became real when it included a 16-hour car ride, extremely hard work, and not enough sleep. Some people th might think of these as negatives, but it really resulted in an incredible shared experience. 
Each year, SSP continues to get better and better, and I can't wait for the m memories I will continue to make in the following summers. First of all, the sense of accomplishment I felt when working each day was surreal. Being able to look back on my work when the day was over and notice the difference our group made was really fulfilling. On the first day at the work site, my group pulled countless amounts of invasive ivy from the forest floor and off of the redwood tree trunks. Our community sponsors said that our work helped save many trees from death by ivy. Since redwoods are becoming more and more scarce, it was nice to know the impact of our work. On the second day at SSP, we all worked to remove invasive beach grass from the Talawa dunes. The work was needed so native species can thrive once again and native birds can nest and build a home. I learned other skills that week too. I learned how to paint a building. I learned how to dig deep roots out of a sand dune. I learned how to clear a trail in the redwood forest, how to build a garden box, how to use tools and machines. I learned how to open up, how to connect with others in a way that is different from what I'm used to. This connection did not involve phones as they were taken away from us at the beginning of the trip. It made us all 100% present with one one another and forced us to branch out. I learned that I can make connections without my phone. SSP was also an incredible experience socially. First of all, every day was one big sleepover. <laughs> Secondly, we were able to connect within our work groups. For my team, the thing that brought us together was our carpool, carpool karaoke each day. Our playlist consisted of the same few songs, which included Let It Go from Frozen and How Far I'll Go from Moana. Also, within my work group, I was able to meet some incredible people from different backgrounds and even continents. I met a foreign exchange student from Germany and one from Japan. Learning about their culture and the experiences they have had was really special. Within my work team, I was also able to strengthen existing friendships. Outside of my work group, I got to meet some amazing people. Every day at breakfast and dinner, we squeezed as many people as we could into our table and had one big conversation. SSP allowed me to talk to and make connections with so many people from different schools, different communities, and different parts of the world. In a way, SSP prepared me for high school. Just like I was scared of SSP because I would be around a lot of new people, I was scared of high school for the same reason. But SSP proved to me that I could enter a new setting with new people and make the most of it. Overall, I had an incredible week and I was almost sad to go home. I can't wait for next year and the incredible experience I know it will be. And thank you all for your support in making the trip possible. We really appreciate it. Oh, aren't they awesome? <laughs> I'm so proud. <laughs> um, so I would just like to close this uh, time of sharing with a poem. Our spiritual life coordinator actually wrote a poem every day of the week, or for every day of the week of our experience, and he titled the final one, Del Norte 2023. So I thought I would share this with you as a closing thought um, for our sermon time. In the heart of the redwoods, where the river runs clear, we've planted seeds of service with hearts sincere. We've grown, we've bloomed, our branches stretched wide, and now the fruits of our labor we cannot hide. For the homeowners we've helped, our service in bloom, their gratitude, a fruit that we've been given, a precious boon. To the forest, the gardens, our hands have shown care, the fruits we've provided with all we can spare. Yet we too have been nourished with gifts so grand, a place to stay, views to behold in this beautiful land. The community we formed, a fruit so sweet, fellowship and friendship, a treat to greet. For the fruits we've been given, the fruits we've shared, speak of a love that's truly rare. In our hearts, these memories will keep as we return to our lives, our commitments we keep. As we prepare to leave, our hearts grow heavy, yet light. We ponder how to continue this fight, to carry back these fruits to our home, wherever it may be, and sow the seeds wherever we roam after SSP.
So, in that spirit, will you please now stand as you are comfortable and join in singing Here I Am, Lord, a favorite at SSP. The words will be printed in your bulletin or can be found in your pew hymnal. bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Amen. Amen.